I'm just gonna come out and say it. I feel really good lately. Um, I am gonna talk about hair, I promise. I'm gonna talk about hair a little bit later. That lately, not so good. And we'll get into that, but I feel so good. And that is one of the reasons that I'm making this video today. Um, I love YouTube for a bunch of reasons. Um, like I love talking to people. I love helping people. Um, I love being the center of attention, obviously. Um, so it's kind of like a win-win-win for me. Um, but as far as like talking to people and helping people, I really feel like some of the things I'm going to talk about in today's video are going to really help a lot of people watching this video. Um, it's hard to come on here right now and say how good I feel because I know that a lot of you probably don't feel good every day. And I don't want to say I feel like amazing every single day. Everybody's going to have days where they feel tired or they're down the dumps or whatever. But um, I know some of you right now are probably really tired. You know, you got the kids and that and the job and everything. Or maybe you don't have kids, but you just have like a busy lifestyle. There's a lot going on in the world right now that's like really scary and really sad. Um, and it's just COVID and all of that. It's just like, it's just not good. It's not a great time for humanity as a whole, um, but if you can make yourself feel good despite all of that, I think that you deserve that. Um, and so anyway, without more of an intro, um, because I'm rambling, I'm gonna get into the things that I changed over the last couple of months that have made me feel this good. And I know that if you do at least a couple of them, it's gonna help you to feel really good too. One of the things that I struggled with a lot and you guys wouldn't know this by watching my channel because you only really see me at my best but one of the things that i just struggle with all the time is that i kind of feel tired all the time and not only do i feel tired but i just don't feel like i have the mental energy to do all of the things and organize all the things that i need to organize um and i wouldn't say i'm a depressed person or somebody who is like who like worries about things too much um but i definitely get into ruts you know what i mean you get into ruts you're sleeping in all the time you just feel tired all the time you go to work you're not bringing like your best self you're just going in and putting in your you know eight hours or 12 hours or whatever um even like your relationships with like your kids your husband your family um and your relationship with yourself you're just not like a hundred percent and I was just getting sick of it. Um, I'm going to be 39 this summer, which is young. Like, that's not old. I was starting to say things like, oh, I wish I had the same amount of energy I had when I was in my 20s. Or, um, you know, I would tell people, oh, I used to be really in good shape. I used to be really healthy. All of these things. I was kind of losing that energetic fit person that I used to be and kind of falling into a little bit of a rut and I know everybody's going to have varying degrees of that but for me I was just kind of meh like I was just kind of feeling blah all the time I also felt like time was going by so fast my kids are getting so big so fast and I was forgetting things all the time and just feeling like there weren't enough hours in the day and I just thought you know it's got to be a little better than this. We got to work at this a little bit. Um, and so I decided to kind of look into it a little bit and make some changes. And uh, so to prevent me from rambling on and on and on, I'm just going to get into the things that I changed. I'd say there's probably about four things that I changed over the last couple of months that like completely changed everything, completely changed the way I feel. Um, and again, they're things that I think will help you a lot. So the first thing I want to talk about is my cell phone. <laughs> so this is my cell phone. Um, I have an older cell phone and you can probably only tell because uh, it's small. Um, I think I have an iPhone 6 or something like that. It's um, a 32 gig so it has a lot of storage for pictures. If you're someone who is under the age of 20 and you didn't live in the generation that I lived in before cell phones and then you know in the cell phone era uh, this chat is going to feel a little different for you, but I know what it was like to be an adult, like a young adult, and not have a cell phone. So like when I was 23, I think I got my first cell phone. So 
Um, and I was like in the workforce and living on my own since I was about like 18, 19. So I had a few good years with no phone. Then when I did have a phone, I was someone who just didn't have a whole lot of money. So I didn't have like a data package or anything like that. So I had a long period of time where I didn't really have a phone. Cut to now, um, I do everything on my phone. So on my phone I have, um, and I don't even have TikTok. I won't do it because I love Instagram so much and I just can't be like addicted to anything else. So on my phone I had uh, like Facebook, Facebook Messenger, texting, uh, Snapchat, and Instagram. Um, and like my app for ordering my groceries, like pretty much the standard stuff, my online banking, all of that. Um, and I always thought that I was someone that was really good to not always be on their phone. But when I checked my screen time, my screen time was like something like five hours a day. And I know that that doesn't mean that you're sitting staring at your phone scrolling for five hours. It's everything. Like every time you turn your phone on, if you're listening to music, if you're texting people, which is like unavoidable, uh, it drives your screen time up. But I just knew that that was too much. Um, and I just became more conscious of what, how much I was on my phone and I became more conscious of like how often I was just picking up my phone like out of habit without even realizing I was doing it and then uh, beginning the scrolling cycle. So another thing I want to mention before I get into this is that I'm not somebody who um, gets like depressed or has like anxiety or negative feelings about social media itself um, and so some of us are going to be divided in this aspect but like going on Facebook going on Instagram doesn't make me feel bad about myself so that's like a bonus like I when I look at people's lives I either like genuinely feel happy for them or like I know like if you looked at my Instagram, you'd probably think I have like the perfect life. And don't get me wrong, it's pretty good, but um, it's not as good as it looks aesthetically on my Instagram page. And I know that's true for me, and I know that that's true for everyone else. So I think I have a good like grasp on social media, but it still affects you mentally. Um, and it has more to do with like the way your body produces like endorphins and things like that, and the physiological stimulant or stimulus, sorry, that you get when you scroll on social media. Um, there's a couple of good documentaries on Netflix and I'll list them here, but um, I think pretty much everybody who's on social media has like a little bit of an idea of like the effects of social media, especially on children, like in television and all of this of us constantly just getting um, like overstimulated from all angles um, and never having an opportunity to be bored and never having an opportunity to just sit and be alone in a peaceful environment with your thoughts and just be in the present moment and when I say those words <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm gonna be really cliche here and I'm not but it is so important to be grounded and be in fully invested in your environment as much as possible. And we are getting away from that now and getting more into being in the digital space, which is fine for work and for other things like that. But when I'm in my living room, even if my kids are watching TV, TV, I don't want to be on my phone inside Instagram. I want to be in the same room as my kids and my husband. Um, or even be by myself and just be alone with my own thoughts. So this video I can tell already is gonna be like a million minutes long. So that's how I feel about all of that. And I was just done with it. I was just like, okay, that's enough. I'm done with this. Like, I love Instagram. I do like Facebook. I am in favor of technology. I don't wanna get rid of my phone altogether. What am I gonna do? So I started kind of looking at different options and a lot of like YouTubers are getting rid of their smartphones and getting like the old flip phones. So that's what I was gonna do. I told my husband, um, that's what I'm gonna do. And he told me the same things that everybody in your family is gonna say to you if they're not like super supportive. They're gonna be like, well, why can't you just have control and just not pick up your phone, duh. Um, doesn't work that way, obviously. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't all be addicted to our phones. So I was trying to think of like a solution 
Um, a flip phone to me isn't practical because if you were going somewhere and you needed directions and you wanted to be able to go on the internet, you know, it's pretty good to be able to do that. I mean, we don't need it, but for practical reasons, I would like to have access to the internet. The other thing is that I would like to be able to take like decent quality pictures of my kids and send them to like their grandparents and things like that. Um, I really like ordering my groceries online. Um, you know, like my online banking app. There's a few things that I'm not really willing to part with. And so for me, it was all about how can I keep this phone, but minimalize it. Yeah, minimalize it. Yep, that's the word. Sorry, I'm getting too excited. But how can I minimize it? Minimalize it. I don't know. Anyway, how can I make it so that I can't use this phone for social media unless absolutely necessary? Um, and so what I did was I deleted the apps off my phone, which is fine. That's what I did first. I just deleted the apps off my phone. So I deleted Snapchat off my phone. I deleted Instagram off my phone. I deleted Facebook off my phone and that was fine. But I would still allow myself if I wanted to go into my browser and search Facebook and then log into Facebook if I really wanted to. I found that still wasn't enough because once you do it a few times, it's really simple. It's just like a couple of clicks and you're there. Um, so then I went in and I put on time limits on my phone so I could have 15 minutes a day for each thing. So like that worked for a little while. Um, and then I would just, a, like a hourglass pops up and it'll say like ignore time limit for 15 minutes or ignore time limit to the end of the day. I was just like ignoring it. So that wasn't good enough. So then I actually went in and I just looked up a YouTube video on how to do it. I put like sort of like parental controls on my phone so that, um, I'm just not able to access Facebook or Instagram or anything like that on my phone without actually going in, changing my security settings, then going into my browser, then signing in, putting in a password. Like it's a lot of trouble really, but if I was waiting for uh, a message from somebody or if like there was somebody I could only contact on Facebook Messenger or something like that and I absolutely had to, I could go in, change my settings, you know, go to the app store, re-download the app, log in, all that. Like I could do it if I wanted to. And so far, that's kind of where I am and that's what I have been comfortable with. And that is what I highly, 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 highly recommend. Um, and I just really spend so much less time with my phone in my hand. Um, and I just feel like I have more time in the day. And I feel like I have better connections with people. So when I'm in the break room at work, um, I'm not on my phone the whole time. I'm actually talking to my coworkers. Even when I'm in public, I don't have my head down on my phone. I'm not constantly checking my phone. It's just a lot better. I feel like it's better for my kids, like when my kids are around, I'm not constantly on my phone. Um, I find my house is more organized because I just notice little things around my house quicker. I just feel a lot better. Um, I feel mentally better. I feel less tired. That was one of the things that I did. Um, and it's just been, there are no negatives. I can't think of one negative thing to say about changing that. It's been about 60 days. Um, I do miss Snapchat a little bit because that was fun, but that's just one of those things that I'm just going to give up. So that was the first thing. Um, I'm going to talk about probably four other changes that I made in my life, but um, they're going to be super quick to talk about. So I promise this video is not going to be like an hour long, but if you guys have any questions about the cell phone thing or any advice or um, anything that you've been thinking of, please um, leave it in the comment section below. Thing number two that I did. And it's only like not even the middle of March. So this one I've only really been doing for a month, but um, I did dry February. So my cousin does this every February. She just doesn't drink for the month of February. Cause you now after like Christmas and New Year's, um, you tend to drink a little bit more over the holiday season if you're someone who drinks. Um, and so people do dry February, first time I ever heard of it, but I was like, I'm doing that. Um, I 
don't think I drink that much, but I definitely drink like once on the weekend, like I'll get like a buzz on. And I probably drink a couple of drinks during the week that I don't even really need. I just kind of do it out of habit. So um, why do that? Like to save money, alcohol has a lot of toxic effects on the body and just for my general overall health. So like the calories and the sugar and all of that in uh, alcoholic beverages. And I just don't really need it. And I was just curious to see if I could do it and I wanted to try it. So I tried it. Um, on a serious note, I do have, um, there's a lot of alcoholism in my family. And so I don't know, I feel like I say I don't drink very much, but I'm a person that can't have alcohol in my house. I'm just going to be honest. Like if I had if I bought like a bottle of wine and I had it in my fridge, I can't leave it there. Like I just drink it until it's gone. And then I might not buy anything again for a month, but I just can't have it in the house. So I was just like curious to see how I would do. So anyway, I did dry February. Um, and I don't know if it's like a placebo effect or what, but I was just saying to my husband, like, oh my God, like, I just feel so good. I don't know if it has anything to do with cutting back on the alcohol, but like, I just feel different. I just feel a lot better. Maybe, maybe it's a placebo effect or maybe I just feel, I don't know, not as tired or something like that, but I just feel really good. So that was the other thing I did. I just like gave up alcohol. Okay. The third thing that I did, and this was like another important thing that I think that I did. I, um, started exercising again and if you watch my videos you know that i'm somebody who kind of always like i go through periods of time where i exercise and when i don't exercise um but i've never really been able to stick to anything and i think it was because i was always kind of doing it for the wrong reason so not that there's anything wrong with wanting to look good but i think that was always like my number one priority like i would start walking or exercising or doing whatever because I wanted to look like I was in crazy good shape. I wanted to lose weight. I just wanted to look fit and be toned and, and all of that kind of thing. And I think for the first time in my life, and I've tried this before to have this mindset, but I actually really feel like it's sticking this time. I'm actually doing it to have more energy and to feel better and to just be healthier and be in better shape and be able to move a lot better. Like I was noticing I was so weak. Like I couldn't open a jar of pickles the other day. Like that is just not me. Like I was just so weak after having my kids. Um, I just wasn't really happy with my energy levels. I felt like if I go to like bend down quickly and stand up, like my knees would crack. I'm not flexible at all. I was getting winded doing things and I was starting to tell people like, you know, I used to be in really good shape. I used to have a lot of energy and stamina um, and just feel good about myself and be strong and be able to open jars, um, be able to do push-ups, be able to run, be able to play hard with my kids and not be like super out of breath. Um, and so this kind of happened by chance. I've been kind of like mulling the uh, over the idea of you know, joining the gym again or doing something. I didn't really know what I really wanted to do. Um, and like I mentioned in the intro, you guys know how I love people. I love talking to people. I love being the center of attention, right? So um, all of this before YouTube, like I used to be a group fitness instructor and I used to teach aerobics classes and I forgot how much joy that brought me. Um, not only because I was like fit, but because I was helping other people See, do you notice the theme here? Um, but I just never pictured myself um, going back to that. And then what happened was um, the gym really close to my house, the owners of that gym, I know really well, a bunch of their staff had COVID. So um, one of the girls that owns the gym was like teaching all of the classes and getting burnt out. And she texted me and said, um, can you sub a spinning class? Like, any day of the week like can you help me out like I'm kind of <laughs> kind of desperate like are you still teaching kind of thing I was like oh my god I haven't taught in forever um but when I was talking to her I kind of had a buzz on so maybe it's good that I waited until February to quit drinking but like I had a little buzz on I was drunk enough that I cut my own bangs so like that's the kind of state of mind I was in um 
<laughs> but anyway, and I was like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. And she was like, the classes are in the dark, the spin classes. And I was like, oh, that's even better because like if I'm just totally gassed when I'm teaching, I can just kind of fake it or whatever. They won't see how red my face is and I'm just gonna do it. So anyway, I, I made up a playlist of my spin class um, and went and I taught one class and I like, I, I can't even describe it. <laughs> when I was walking out of there, I felt like I was just like over the moon. I just got home. I, I swear my husband was probably like, get away from me because I was so excited again about something and I was just so happy. Um, and it was brutal. Don't get me wrong. Like I was so sore. My butt was so sore. My legs were so sore. I was like so red in the face. Um, and I found it really, really challenging. But then I started teaching there once a week. So it's been about two months now. I've been teaching there um, once a week. And I teach, they just started a brand new spin program at the yoga studio um, in my hometown. And the yoga studio is like kind of cool, kind of swanky. It's new and they have like a really cool atmosphere. All the bikes are new. Um, they have like lighting like kind of like DJ lighting and a really cool Bluetooth sound system. And I know a lot of the members and like nothing against the other gym that I'm teaching spinning at either because that's like a full fledged gym. Like it's amazing, beautiful, don't get me wrong. But like to teach at the yoga studio is just kind of like another little perk, I guess. And um, I just love it. So now I went from like not exercising <laughs> To teaching, I'm teaching two spin classes a week, and in order to kind of get myself back in shape enough so that I can do that well and I can be like motivating while I'm teaching, I decided to start exercising again. And this is what I'm gonna suggest to you. I'm not suggesting to you to go um, teach spinning classes, um, but if you are someone with a busy lifestyle like me, I started exercising for free. Um, I follow somebody on YouTube who posts workouts like every other day. And I just go down to my basement because there's like a big mirror down there um, for a half hour in the evenings on the days I'm not teaching spinning and I do like a little half hour workout. That's all I need. It's a full body workout. It's like cardio plus strength. You don't need any equipment. Um, I'm gonna link her channel below and I'll try to like put a picture or something. I think her channel's called Growing Ananas. Um, and if you look at it right now, you might find it a little bit intimidating because it's a lot of her workouts are like high intensity interval training. And a lot of it has a lot of plyometrics and jumping and all of that, but um, it's not necessary. She has a lot of um, low impact or no impact workouts, workouts that are all done standing so that if you're really not in very good shape and you find it hard to get up and down off the floor, like you don't have to do anything like that, it's all standing. They're all intervals, there's good music, and they're either like, some of them are 15 minutes long, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, and if you did something like that, like a couple of days a week, it just makes such a huge difference in like how much energy you have. And so yeah, so just to recap, just, you know, stop being addicted to my phone, um, giving up alcohol and um, exercising. They're the first three things that I did. The fourth thing that I did is really simple, but, and I never like read to do this or anything like that. It's just something that kind of made sense to me that I wanted to try, is that I changed the way that I consume caffeine. So I love coffee. I love coffee more than alcohol. I would give up alcohol, no problem. Coffee, I absolutely love coffee. I'm never gonna give it up unless somebody told me like it was killing me, but um, I really enjoy having coffee, but I was somebody who would wake up in the morning. Sometimes I'd drink coffee before I'd even eat anything. I'd drink coffee at home. I'd have a coffee at work. I'd go for my break at work. I'd have a coffee there. Me and my husband would have coffee after supper. Like I just think I was consuming too much caffeine. So now the only thing I changed about that, I'm not like, my caffeine is limited now, but not really on purpose. Um, but what I changed was that I don't drink any coffee or tea until noon time. So when I wake up in the morning, I either drink water or hot water. You could probably drink herbal tea, like caffeine-free tea if you really wanted to, but 
I just drink hot water or cold water. I drink water all morning. I start to feel like, oh, I'd like to have a little pick me up around lunchtime. And then I have my first coffee at lunch and I feel like just my energy levels are more consistent throughout the day. Sometimes I still have a coffee in the evening and that's fine. Like I probably have two a day most days, but I'm not drinking it like as soon as I wake up on the morning and in the morning. And because of that, I feel like I'm not as dependent on it. So there is a fifth thing. The last thing that kind of happened to me that made me feel like happier and feel more like peaceful and just like I have more energy is that I started listening to um, some podcasts on my drive to work instead of um, just listening to music. And um, I was also listening to CBC radio a little bit and there was this podcast, it was um, this Buddhist monk, his name was Thich Nhat Hanh, who was like uber famous and um, some of you are going to be like, duh, Susie, like, how did you not know who that was? Um, but never heard of him before. I can't believe it. I'm kind of embarrassed to say that I never did. Um, and I listened to one of his podcasts about, like, basically about being more present and slowing down and feeling more interconnectedness with nature and with the people in your community, the people in your home, with yourself, um, and just not to be constantly searching because everything you have is is right here basically in this world that we have um, and within yourself. And it was just so inspiring. It was just really nice to read and hear about some kind of spiritual, like, affiliation or religion or something that really really aligns with all of my thoughts and my feelings and kind of the way I feel about the world and it was just um, really satisfying for me to kind of feel grounded like that because I've never really had anything that I felt connected to before so that was like that was really cool too so there there are all of the things that have changed over the last couple of months I know it sounds like a lot um, and it is actually uh, nine minutes after two and I have to pick my son up at quarter after two, meaning I have to go get my baby out of bed, put him in the car, go pick up my son. Um, and I can make it, but I can't make it if I keep talking in this video. Now I know I said I was gonna talk about um, just this brutal thing that happened to me right before I started like my journey um, towards being the, I don't wanna say the new me, but um, my more energetic, better self. Um, but I kind of fell into like a little online scam and I'm gonna tell you about that. And I didn't get to talk about my hair, so I'm gonna make a part two of this video. I might make it today when I get home or I might make it tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you like this video. I hope it was helpful. Please try at least some of the things. And if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a big old thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye. Yeah. What do you got there? Um, it's me. But I'm putting a comb. Oh. And there's a bunch of dirt. Was that the one you were pre primary? No, it's too much. What's that a picture of? Uh, it's me, but I'm in the mud. Oh, that's